What's happening everybody, the poets here, hope you're doing well and staying safe. And today we are continuing the build series for this interesting PC with the MSI Meg X670E motherboard. It's the ACE lineup, so very high tier on the MSI spectrum. And we are now at the point of NVMe drive installation. And I thought this was just gonna be like a, just a quick video. I wasn't even sure if I was gonna do it because it's so easy, but MSI threw uh, a curveball. It's something different. They have some options with this and I like it a lot. So this is gonna be educational. So even if you have installed 20 of these NVMe sticks before, you may not have seen this. So yeah, I, I've, I have a lot of motherboards. This is my first time. So uh, this in particular is the PCIe Gen 4.0 uh, Fury Renegade by Kingston. And I absolutely love it. It gets like 7,300 megs per second read speeds. Um, I put these in RAID 0, hitting like 13,000 megs per second read speeds. It's pretty crazy. They stay cool. Um, and obviously having a heatsink on these is kind of mandatory for NVMe drives that are PCI Gen 4.0. And then when it comes to the 5.0, which this motherboard actually does have, it's got a beefy heatsink as well. So you can put actually three PCIe Gen 4.0s here, here, and here, and then one Gen 5 right here. Each of these uh, X670E motherboards will have some type of PCIe Gen 5.0 capabilities for NVMe drives. Uh, then you get to the lower tier, AM5 motherboards, some of them may not even have any PCIe Gen 5.0 compatibility. Doesn't really matter, honestly, for 2022 right now because PCIe Gen 4.0 is so fast that unless you're doing some serious high-end content creation with extremely large video files and you need to transfer stuff, like huge amounts of data, you won't tell any difference between this and a PCIe Gen 5.0. All right, so even if you have PCI Gen 3.0, which tends to max out at like 3,500 megabytes per second speeds, you will um, still find it very difficult to tell the difference between this at 7,300 and a PCI Gen 3.0 at 3,500. So it all depends on your workflow. I'm not, you notice I didn't mention gaming because gaming doesn't matter. You, you, you won't notice any difference whatsoever. So don't overspend if you don't have to. But to the point of this video, Let's get this installed and let me show you the different ways that this can actually get installed on this motherboard. It'll be very educational, so let's do it. To access the Lightning Gen 5 area right here, it's pretty cool. It actually has this little push button right here. See that? And so you push that in, lift it, and then this slides out. It's got these two little grooves here that actually stick right there, which is really cool. Then of course it has the, you know, the, the pad here to help it cool the NVMe drive on both sides here and here as well. So this is a very cool mechanism. I can't wait to see this like universally accepted across motherboards. And uh, let's see here, so it just sticks right there. Push that in and boom, there it is. Now these are slightly different. So let me show you these here. And this makes it nice and easy. I like these like electronic screwdrivers. And so this does have two pads here and then two pads right there, but that's not all. It actually does have these nice little clips. So it's basically quote unquote screwless because you do have to like screw this top plate off, but to install the drives, it is easy. So let me grab the drive here, but I'm not gonna install it permanently in this fixture just want to show you so it just goes at an angle there press it down and then just latch it on boom installed so no more like little tiny screws right there which is really nice so I'm gonna take that off because I don't want it at, in this slot right now so I am going to then show you this one because this is the one where I am going to put this drive and I'm gonna have to actually add a little piece as well. Let's see, did I do that enough? Yes, I did. So you'll notice here, this actually has this funky little device here that plugs right in there. And it's called some type of LED something or another. So like JP, IPE underscore LED2. 
So I've never seen that before. That's pretty cool. So I'm gonna like do more research to really see what this is all about, but I'm guessing this maybe lights up somehow because there are cords right there that go underneath here. So that's kind of nifty. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what that's all about. But you'll notice that if I tried to put this in right here, that there's nothing to screw it into right here. It's just floating in midair and we can't have that. Can we? No, no, we can't. So what we're going to do is actually take one of these, which is included with the motherboard. See this little doohickey right here. And we're going to screw that down. Uh, if I can easily, maybe. And now uh, we are going to do our one time. There we go. Yeah. Strip that screw. There we go. And so now I am going to put this right here, place it down, lock it in. It's locked in. I love that so much. And so now at this point, we are going to take this off from this side, right? Mm, the peel. And we're going to go ahead and place this back right here. Screw this back on one handed because we're champs. There we go. All the way in. That's solid. And I could take this peel off as well, but I'm going to wait. Now, the reason why I'm not going to use these two right away is because one GPUs are really hot. And so that's going to take up a large chunk of area right here. So if I have like a 3090, 4090, 5090, 6090, 7090, <laughs> um, this whole area is going to be kind of hot. Unless of course I'm water cooling, which I probably will. But that's one re good reason to have dual pads here on the bottom and the top of those M.2 NVMe drives. So then this just falls into place right here. And this thing is solid. It's like, it's no joke. There we go. Down. And down. All right. So that's all solid. We now have a two terabyte Kingston Fury Renegade PCI Gen 4.0 NVMe M.2 drive right here. And then this motherboard actually does have a nice nifty extra feature, which I showed in another video, but it's an actual expansion card for more PCI Gen 5.0 cards that can go right here as well. So that's it for this video. Nice and simple NVMe drive installations. I love these screwless clips. Yes, you still need a screwdriver to access like the, uh, the front plates, their decoration, but they're also heat sinks as well. And if you do have an NVMe drive that actually comes with its own heat sink, you can remove almost all of those heat sinks. I've never seen one that you couldn't remove um, and just use these to keep your motherboard aesthetic looking great. Uh, or you can actually just take these plates off and just use the one that came with your NVMe drive. Perfectly fine. Just be aware of clearance issues when it comes to adding additional cards or GPUs or whatever it is that you may want to install in these PCIe um, slots right there. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. If you do have a favorite NVMe drive, let me know and let me know why as well. And um, yeah, these speeds are, are getting faster and faster, which is great. We need to have our storage as fast as possible uh, because that allows everything else to be the bottleneck. You don't want your storage to be the, to be the bottleneck. Also, I do have a question for all of you. Are you only using NVMe drives? Because this is the only thing I use. I don't use SATA SSD drives anymore. Uh, and for hard disk drives, I do use those in my NAS. That's it. So, you know, these two terabyte ones, adding a couple of them because you have four slots. That's eight terabytes right there, which I did have in, in my PC over there. Eight terabytes of these Kingston Fury Renegade PCI Gen 4.0 NVMe M.2 drives. It's a long name. All right, I'm out. Like and subscribe. Share all the things. Yeah, peace. <laughs>